Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Angela Nahikian, Director of Global Environmental Sustainability at Steelcase. Well, good morning. Good morning to all of you. And I have to say on behalf of Steelcase what an honor it is for me to be here with you today. Um, I, I, uh, I want to ask uh, you a question. Why? Why would a hundred-year-old global furniture company be interested in sponsoring the remarks of an upstart gorilla gardener from Los Angeles? Well, you might be asking yourself that question, and Ron himself backstage might be asking himself that question. Um, many of you know that unlikely linkages are what sustainability is all about. And certainly this Green Build Master Speaker series is all about unlikely linkages. It's bringing together diverse leaders from different experiences with different expertise who share a passion for championing sustainability and looking to each other for inspiration and motivation to fuel this incredibly difficult work that we do every day. So while some differences might be apparent, we have a lot in common. Ron's work reminds us that sustainability is disruptive, that it is a constant work in progress. And for us at Steelcase, this has sometimes meant disrupting the status quo within our company. And as we work to pursue ways to improve our sustainability performance, we discover new ways to improve our business fitness to compete. It often starts with innovation, it's true, but beyond that, it's just a lot of hard work, it's a lot of passion, it's personal commitment. It takes getting your hands dirty to be able to create the change that you want to see in the world. Ron's work also reminds us that what goes into things matters, whether you're growing a carrot or whether you're designing and creating an office chair. You want to do that without toxic ingredients. And at Steelcase, for decades, that's meant cradling our strategy in materials chemistry, in life cycle assessment, and in the systems level design thinking, cradle to cradle design thinking around our product portfolio. At a fundamental level, Ron's work also reminds us that sustainability means living in a world where our spaces matter and they work for us in different ways. So whether we're transforming corporate offices and settings and technology to support 21st century workers, or whether we're transforming a vacant lot to grow vegetables, to nourish families, to help them thrive. All of this reminds us, I hope, that at its heart and in its soul, sustainability is about people. For more than 100 years, Steelcase has been supporting and working with people. We study people at work, and we design for people at work, and we are constantly inspired by the work people do, work like Ron Finley does. As a company that finds its pur purpose in unlocking human promise, we recognize that sustainability has to be a whole lot more than just certifications and footprint reduction and standards creation. As our CEO often reminds us, sustainability isn't just about using less, it's about creating more. It's about creating more opportunity, it's about creating more innovation, it's about creating more capacity for people around the world. And like so many of you, we want to create lasting change in the world through supporting the foundations and the infrastructure that sustains us all. We want to see people at the center of sustainability. And we want to see the efforts broad enough to include reducing carbon and amplifying people's well-being, broad enough to include human-centered design and human rights throughout the world and to extend community involvement to all the places where we work and we live. This is our leadership imperative. It's one we share with all of you. This is what aligns our interests. It's what drives our intentions, sending us to new areas of exploration and research and experimentation and collaboration as we work to deliver all of us greater value across this very complex web of environmental, social, and economic platforms. So it's for these reasons that Steelcase is incredibly proud today to sponsor Ron Finley as a master speaker. 
and I'm certain he will stimulate my thinking as a fellow gardener and yours on so many fronts. Thank you. Good morning. My name is John Qualley. I'm a member of the U.S. Green Building Council's Board of Directors. I'm also the director of the Graduate Architecture Program at University of Virginia. And I'm pleased to welcome you to the Green Build Master Speaker Series session. Each year, USGBC invites leaders from our industry to serve as master speakers at Green Build. This year, it is my honor to introduce Ron Finley, the man who is revolutionizing community and urban gardening and making kale cool. He is a gorilla gardener who dared to start a small garden on an L.A. roadside and is now embarking on a larger project, his horticultural revolution to change barren American food deserts into thriving food forests. His work in South Central L.A. creates a space for people to come together to learn about nutrition and gardening and business management. And most importantly, his work is aimed at changing the way kids view food and connect it to their health and well-being and making it cool to care about what you eat. I'm really looking forward to introducing um, uh, to Ron and to hearing him speak, although I have to say this opportunity uh, to introduce him has put me in trouble with my wife. Um, she can't attend Greenbuild this year, and she runs a thriving teaching garden, uh, mostly vegetables, at the elementary school our children attended in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. And Ron is one of her heroes. She's jealous that I get to shake his hand. Anyhow, please join me in welcoming Ron Finley. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Uh, let's, I, I want to... Um, Let's, let's start this off. I want a couple of people to get up on the mics. What do you guys find sexy? I'm serious. Somebody, anybody, somebody tell me. What, what do you guys find sexy? Well-designed cars. No doubt. Who else? Character. Well-designed cars. Authenticity. Who got something else? Adam Levine. Muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Muscles are sexy. <laughs> what else? So what I want to do, I want, I, want us, I want us to work on making gardening sexy. I think it's imperative um, that we do that. It's like even with buildings, like we need to make, I think what we, we need to get everybody involved in gardening. And I think the way to do that is we got to make it sexy. You know, like, this, this is a picture I took of <laughs> some June bugs. <laughs> um, I mean, this was, this was, this was like, this should have been private, you know. <laughs> to, you know, and I mean, it was, it was crazy to see these bugs doing this, you know, and taking turns. It was kind of bizarre. Um, but, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and talk to you about propagation and, you know, the stamens and pistols and but and pollinating but what you guys must realize is the garden is one big ass orgy you know and it, it, it's happening like say that's sexy that's sexy it's hard it's happening like 24 hours a day 365 days a year constantly that um what's happening in the garden um, I think it's up to us to um, realize that, you know, we're soil. We're just like, we're bacteria. We, we, what happens to us happens to Mother Nature. And I think we're getting far, we need to start taking better care of Mother Nature because Mother Nature, she doesn't waste, you know. If we follow Earth systems, when we build buildings, you know, you guys, there's no waste. Um, we waste. And um, we're 
screwing up the whole planet with our waste. We need to realize that we are the same as garden has has a garden, uh, like with this photo. Um, to me, that's sexy. To me, you, even though you're in a high rise, even though you're in a city, you still get to see beautiful um, greenery. I mean, you what happens when um, when something like this takes place? It's it becomes your solace, and they they've proven that when when there's well-designed green spaces in a lot of places, in a lot of different places, you know, the health rate's better, crime rate goes down. Um, and I think we need, in building, we need to consider this more. We need to consider, and it's funny to me, where, like with, um, with the solar panels and the water catchment and all this kind of stuff and the wind mills, wind turbines, that stuff, rich people has it. I mean, rich people don't really need to save that much money. You know, it seems like it, we need to figure out a way where we can get this technology to the people who really can't afford their bills and, and that need to um, be able to save money instead of the opposite way around. Um, this to me is sexy, getting a community get together at a school and planting a garden, planting fruit trees. Um, what we've, what I found is when, um, if kids grow kale, kids eat kale, you know, but a lot of times they're not exposed to it. They're not exposed to, I, why, let me go, why I started doing what I, what I've, I'm a criminal. <laughs> you know, I, well, I was a criminal. I, I'm not a criminal anymore. I, I was, I'm a criminal because I decided to plant carrots in front of my house. And, um, and with that, um, I got a citation and threatened to be arrested. Um, so, and that, 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 and that was, it turned out to be a beautiful thing. It turned out to be a beautiful thing because um, with that, I kind of started, I don't know, uh, let's say a gardening uh, revolution, I'm sorry, ecolution. Um, whereas this was, this is what, this is what I trans, <laughs> this is what I transferred from this to, that's almost sexy because we started working on it, to, um, to that was the start of it, um, to this, to an ecosystem. Um, but they wanted to put me in jail for that. They wanted to put me in jail to, for, um, showing people how to grow healthy food, uh, which that's what, it, that's what it was a couple of years ago. Now it's literally a jungle. P kids pass by and say, Dad, it's a jungle. Where did it come from? Um, but what it does, it lets people, when people walk by, my place is like Disneyland now, you know, like a small world. I mean, people come by and that's the way it looks now. And people come by and, you know, they do the little slow drive, you know, Disney drive by and point and they want to see what's happening. But what it has done is it's brought the community together. It is, it is also people have, it's opened people's minds. It's opened people's minds to what we should be doing with land instead of having these barren strips all over this country where in my neighborhood there's couches and condoms and mattresses and trash everywhere. And I didn't get cited for that. I could leave a couch and trash out there and nobody, you know, nobody wanted to arrest me. But I put some carrots and tomatoes out there and all of a sudden, you know, they want to put me in handcuffs. And I think that, that, that it's true. That thinking has to change. Um, <clears throat> so right now we've been able to change that law. We've been able, now everybody in LA, in the city of LA, actually have the option, if they want to plant their parkway, they can plant their parkway with edibles um, because of these holes in my hands. You know, they finally took the nails out. Thank you. Um, so it's, 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 it's spreading like this. These are literally, you know, Japanese sweet potatoes that I grew on my parkway. 
It's like, why use this land to grow grass when you can be feeding a neighborhood, when you can be feeding a community, when you can show people how, what food is and where it comes from. This little girl, Olivia, she's one of the most curious little <laughs> people on the planet. I tell people one day she's gonna probably run a country. She's like, what is this? Where's your wife? Where's your family? Who you? Who is this? And it's like, and her, her son, her, her, her father goes, Ron, she just embarrassed me because she asked these questions of everybody. I'm like, let her. That's who she is. Don't stop her from being, we need more kids like that that want to engage. What is this? Can I have all the ladybugs? It's like, no, you can't, Olivia. She says, please. I'm like, no, and that little please stuff is not going to work. But I mean, that's like just meeting that, <laughs> meeting that woman <laughs> changed my life, you know. Um, I have, I have um, like this is a student from USC that they volunteer in the garden and, you know, and um, I let them have what they can, what they, whatever, take the food that they can take. Um, this, my garden literally for miles is the only place that you can literally get any organic food. And to me, that's got to stop. And it's criminal. I mean, this whole, this, the, 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 the way the, the food system is right now, the way the, um, the fact that you can get fast food, like there's four corners, but there's six fast food restaurants. I don't, I don't know how they manage that, but it's a brilliant, I mean, it's kind of brilliant when you think about it. How'd you get six restaurants on four corners? You know, and they're all, they're all fast food. These kids don't know where their food comes from. They have no idea what a carrot is when it's in the ground. They don't know that potatoes are french fries. Um, and once you get them in the garden, all that changes. I mean, you, we're not, we're not, it's not about, it's not about um, the food necessarily. We're growing, I'm trying to grow healthy human beings, healthy citizens. Um, but when you start a kid's, their palate is started on this garbage, I call it unfood food, that's all they're used to. So now it's, it's harder to get them in touch with real food. And what, and what real food is and where it comes from and what it tastes like. Um, so what, I, what I'm doing with the Ron Finley Project, that's not sexy, but um, is to sh show kids not only how to grow their own food, but how to cook their own food and how to inspire others to do the same. I, have, um, because I did this TED Talk, and because of the TED Talk, I, um, I have kids in India calling themselves gangster gardeners. And um, they're showing, this, so they're recruiting other gangsters in their neighborhoods to start growing their own food. I mean, that garden, it's, it, it seduces you. I mean, like, like this, this started, this was this, now it start, that was a, and then it turned into this. So this is a store. And actually, the guy in the store, people would come to him and ask, can I buy some of your vegetables that are in your garden? You know, it's up for, you know, people can take the stuff if they want. But he did have people come in and want to buy the stuff that was growing on the street. Um, so what happens when you do this? The roots, just like a tree, the roots grow so deep in a sense of, it, it, um, it affects so many other um, uh, people on so many other levels. It's, it's the roots, whereas you're, you're, you're educating, you know, but you're, you're also showing people how earth systems work. You're also um, showing people art because when it's all said and done, isn't it all art? Don't you want to wake up and see beautiful art, you know, every day? Um, it's, it's, showing, it's showing people how to use it, kids how to use their hands. And, you know, and I tell them, I said, you know, you, you, you guys know how to tweet, but your ass can't use a shovel. You know, it's like, how do you not know how to use a shovel? You know, um, that I, 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 I want to, I need to change. You know, and that's, that's what, that's what I'm, I'm doing. I want them to, to realize that you can use the garden as a canvas, just like a painting. 
um, you, you, the only thing now that you're, you're painting, your paint just happens to be plants. You know, I want them to realize that, that that's an art form. Gardening is an art form, but it's also a life form. And, and we, like with the schools, everybody, you know, people ask me, well, Ron, why aren't you in the schools? Why aren't you dealing with the schools? And I tell them, well, you know, de- to me, dealing with the, 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 my, especially LA Unified, is like having sex with the devil. And I said, I'm freaky, but I ain't, I ain't that freaky. You know, so I don't, it's almost like they don't want it to happen. It's almost like these schools don't want these kids educated because they feed them garbage food. Um, and they, I mean, they know this food is, is, is garbage. So how do you expect a kid's mind, body, intelligence to grow if they're not eating healthy food? It's, it's not going to happen. So, uh, you know, with all your technology and your computers, you know, you can put them under the asphalt that you have them playing in um, and run a steamroller roller, roller over it because it's not happening. This is my idea. The schools should be in the garden, not the gardens in the schools. It's like this. This is, um, this is uh, edible Alice Waters' edible schoolyard in, um, in Berkeley, whereas the kids... This is their class. They have a class in the garden. They have a, they're, where they, they're back in touch with nature. They're not spending their life on asphalt. Um, and I think all schools need to be designed like that. Now, and, and I mean, I, I think we need to, that's a paradigm that we need to shift with these, with these schools. We need, you know, we need to make gardening sexy. Um, I love it when, um, I, we put a garden in, and all of a sudden, you have the hummingbirds, you know, you have the dragonflies, you have the bees, stuff the kids, they don't get to see that anymore because of the pollution. They don't get to see that no, anymore because there's no green spaces. That's sexy to me, you know. And they, you want to talk about construction and, and artwork? These birds, they make, they make this thing, and then they make it where they fit perfectly in it, and then they get paint chips of different colors from places, and they put it on just like it's a piece of art. Um, and we need to start doing buildings like that, <laughs> you know, whereas they accommodate us. It's, it's the opposite way. Now, now we have to accommodate the buildings instead of the buildings accommodating us. That's the beauty, and that's what, that's what I'm, when we, when we rely on Earth systems. Um, I think that's all going to come to play. It's like how, it's the, like when ki- kids don't get to see beauty like this, you know, they don't get to to to, to know that uh, what a what a twelve foot sunflower, you know, really looks like in the city, and it can happen in the city. My whole my thing is to bring healthy food to urban areas, bring art to urban areas, bring education to urban areas. You know, what I find in a lot of these school systems. To me, in being in them, it's like they're setting these kids up for prison, you know, and that's, that's basically what it is. You already know that if you're not educating them, you already know if they're not eating right, you know where that's gonna, they're going to take them. Um, and I call it the just us system, not the justice system. Um, when you look at the numbers of who just happened to be not be getting educated and who's in these prisons. All this can be changed, and I think it's up to us to change it. Um, we need to stop, you know, polluting. Um, it's, not, it's not a day goes by that, um, that I s- see people throwing trash out of their car windows, you know, um, cigarette butts. I go to, even, I mean, it's happening all over the world. You go to this beautiful beach in Greece, it's in Greece. And it's just beautiful and pristine, and then you, all the sand is covered with cigarette butts, you know, or the, or the plastic. We got this plastic island floating around, you know, that goes 660 feet in, down, and it's just plastic. Um, that's, not mother, that's not Mother Nature. That's us. And Mother Nature can't, I don't, I don't know how she's going to deal with that. You know, we got the, the um, nuclear power plants. They're, they're um, leaking and faulty. Um, 
I don't know how, how this is going to change unless we demand that we need healthy food, we need places, healthy places to live, and we need healthy communities. Um, and I think if we as you guys, and I, I want to definitely thank Steelcase for, for having me here. I think you guys, you know, with what you have in building, I think it's, it's, that's where it's got to start. We have, to, we have to start there, but first and foremost, I think we have to start with the children. We have to start um, letting these kids know that you have a connection to, to this planet. Like, we all are connected. That, um, that we have to let them know that, that, that growing your food, that's sexy. Growing your food is gangster, you know? Um, and it's art. I want it all to come back to art. Um, I have I have people from all over LA that come and they help us do these things that we call dig-ins and it's uh, it's amazing to me that I have 40 year olds that um, they don't know how to use the shovel you know uh, and it's 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 amazing but like these gardens like even this strip of land is is there, these things are turning up in the neighborhoods where people are putting gardens in, they're putting food in, they're beautifying. Um, they realize that you can use art. You can use food as art. Uh, it doesn't have, and when, when I show people how to garden, you know, people ask me, well, like with this, with this, this, well, this is a perfect example. People ask me, well, where should this plant go? And I'm like, I don't know. You, and they're like, what do you mean you don't know? No, I'm like, no, where do you want it? Where do you want it to go? Where do you feel it should go? You know, we've lost that. We've lost it. Where the book says, Martha Stewart said, I'm like the hell with the book. There is no book. You know, throw the book away. Where do you want it? When you walk outside your door, where do you want to see this plant? And, uh, and to get, I want to get people back to feeling, you know, things. Um, so then they were like, okay, there. It's like the same thing with this path. Where do you want your path in your garden? How do you work? Where do you want it to go? And they'll, they'll say, walk it. Walk the path that you want, and that's what we'll do. And they'll walk it, and they'll put the sharp-ass angle in it. And I'm like, was that comfortable? You know? Uh, or they'll do a straight line, and I'm like, nothing in nature is straight if we're, if we're using nature system. And so I said, so then they'll get it, oh, and they'll feel. I said, how does that feel to you? And that's how I show people get back into what feels natural, what feels real, you know, not, not what you saw in the book. And, and I think we've lost that. I think we've lost, it's like we get to a point where people will go around the corner and they automatically, you know, put their navigation system on. You know, it's like you're going around the corner, you know. <laughs> you know, but we've gotten, we've gotten so used to using you know, technology that in a lot, of, a lot of senses, it's made us more dumb. You know, because look at the phone numbers that us old people had to remember in our head. You know, you, I, I don't even know my son's phone numbers, you know, um, because of the way technology has us. Um, but this is what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get kids back to this. I'm trying to get them in, in, on their knees, in the soil. And, and it's, it's funny, I have these, um, this was a preschool that comes by they bring the they bring the kids by and they're like ah oh, they're all crazy but it's beautiful because they eat stuff right out of the ground they eat plants right out of they just wipe them off and they eat them they're not you know and they're not scared and that's that's loss i mean i have adults where has you know they they can't just take something out of the ground and eat it um because of, you know, I don't know what they're, what they're scared of, but to have, once you have a child engaged in the propagation of their, of their food, it's, it's, it's no better thing than that. I mean, it's, it's, that to me is sexy, you know, because all of a sudden they realize I'm a part of this and this is a part of me, this is real food, and they understand what real food tastes like. That's a... Um, a garden that we did at a school in um, uh, Venice, California. And um, to see this many young kids engaging in gardening, being happy, and eating the food, that's, 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 what, I, that's what this is all about to me. Um, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an urban farmer, but, and I, I'm trying to let people know that 
That doesn't mean you need overalls and tractors. And the bottom line is I plant in anything. If it's going to hold some soil, I'm putting some food in it. I have wheelbarrows that, that have plants in them. I have, I have shopping carts that have plants in them. And, um, yeah, well, see, the thing, the thing about it in the city with the shopping carts <laughs> is they're everywhere. You find shopping carts everywhere in the city. So I figure, why not use them to plant food? I mean, just like, per look at the analogy, shopping cart, growing food inside of it, you know. Um, and, it's, it's, and it's, I also show children how to use things that we're going to go into the compost pile to make things out of. Like, say we cut a tree down, you know, we'll, I'll show them how to use the branches to weave a basket. So now we, we, we've engaged in art, okay, so now they've learned to trade, now they've learned, they, they engage in crafts, but now you've made, you've, it's, you've made a, um, something that you can use to either plant food in or to make compost in and something that will eventually go back into the earth. So it's a lot of systems that you're teaching uh, children there. It's like I like to tell people like compost changed my life and that's going to be my disco song, you know. Whereas, you know, com when you think about it, compost to me is one of the most amazing things that happens on the planet. You don't really have to do nothing with compost. It just happens. You know, but again, that's one of Earth's systems that, that work. And we can't, we can't do any better than that. I mean, and I think that's what's screwing the planet up is everybody thinks they can outdo Mother Nature. Um, and the one thing they must realize, Mother Nature don't play. You know, um, and when your time is up, she's going to, you know, your time going to be up. If you don't believe me, ask the dinosaurs, you know. So we are trying to just get these kids to a point where has, they are giving back to their community. They, 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 they realize that, um, that they're part of the community. They realize that, that these systems will not happen without them. And I think us has, has, the, has the forefathers, <laughs> um, we, need to, we need to give them a, hand them a world that, um, that they can live in and not a world that um, we've trashed and not a world that, that we've um, squandered. I mean, you know, it's, it's not a world where you're paying more for water than you are for gasoline. You know, um, and that these prices that we're paying for food, there's no way that um, that we should be paying these kind of prices for food. You know, what, people ask me why did I why did I start growing, and it's like because I got sick of paying four dollars for organic apple. You know, to me that's criminal. You know, you shouldn't have food should be everywhere. I mean, this this if if the whole this whole place should be a garden. You know. Um, didn't, isn't that what it started as, a garden? You know, so aren't we, wasn't the first job, this guy, he was a gardener and a big guy, some guy said, hey man, I want you to take care of the garden and that thing with the, with the leaf and everything. You know, you know, don't, I'll tell you what to do with that later, but he didn't listen, so now we got plastic. Um, um, so, so I, I want, I, I just want, I want, I want children more so um, just to realize that um, they have a stake in this and um, we need to, we need, I don't know, I, I can't say it enough, we need to fix this, you know? Um, and I, I think the only way it's gonna be fixed is for us to go back to making gardening sexy. We have to make gardening just as sexy as um, working a computer. We have to make gardening a sexy, you know, I think we, maybe we, we'll get some, um, make some, I don't know, some video, some sexy gardening video games or something. <laughs> but we, it, it was, there's got to be a way that we get children involved in this, whereas um, they realize what healthy food is. Um, so I, I just like to say that... Um, I can't, I can't, this, this is like my passion. Um, and 
when I am so honored when a child comes to my, or anybody comes to my garden and they, um, they steal my food. <laughs> you know, um, I have people that come by and, and sometimes I, I get a little pissed, you know, because, you know, it takes 90 days to grow a watermelon, you know. And you come home off a trip and, you know, you wait and, you know, that watermelon. He's like, yeah, my watermelon's going to be there. And, like, and you get there and it's like, the watermelon's gone. It's like, you know, it pisses me off. But, but I got to realize, too, I'm in South Central. So, you know, the whole watermelon, collard green thing, it's like, you know, it's a little sketchy. I, I got I to figure, <laughs> figure out how to work that out. But, I mean, I have, like some people, I have bananas growing on the street you know, in South Central, and people, they, people have never seen bananas, you know, growing. They think you have to be in the tropics and this, and I said, no, this is what's happening. So you, you get to show people how to, how to share, and what, what, um, with the garden, you cannot grow all the food that you can eat. It's impossible, and anybody, how many people in here have a garden? Wow, impressive, impressive. So you know you have to give that food away. You know, you have to, or it's going to rot. So what I, what, one of the things I want to start is to have, um, like, we're blocks. We have blocks situated where everyone's sharing with the food, where it's systematic, whereas you have carrots and kale, and she has tomatoes and onions, and, and it's a collective where now we can trade food with each other. Or I can send my son over to your garden, you know, to get some onions, and you can send my, your son over to my garden, or your daughter over to my garden, you know, to get some beets. So now what you've created, you've created um, not only an ecosystem, you've created um, alliances, you've created a community, and you've created health, um, and it, it, it's endless what, what that, what that um, done, what that's done um, to the community. And that's, that's, what I, that's what I see in all this barren land that we have in these, in these cities where, where we don't have that kind of space to grow in. And a lot of things in the inner city, there's also vacant lots, you know, whereas these places need to be turned into community gardens, um, whereas they build, when you do this, it just builds a hub. It's like having a hub in a community. I want people to get together and realize that the only way we're going to change these communities is we have to do it. We have to do it ourselves. The cavalry's not coming. Um, and I think we have to demand what we want in our communities and what we want in our cities. That has to happen. Um, and again, the only way it's going to happen is if we raise up and we say that we're tired of spending this crazy amounts of money on food. We're tired of our communities not being safe. Um, and I mean, a lot of you guys, you know, I'm sure you don't you don't live in in um, communities like that. But I've been to I've been to so-called you know affluent communities, and they're still they still don't have healthy food to eat. They still don't have fresh organic food and that's 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 one of these words that, that they have people thinking that fresh oh it's fresh oh it's fresh fruits and vegetables and that's some bullshit to me you know it's like no is it organic fresh fruits and vegetables which is a different my i don't want my food to kill me you know i want i don't slowly um and that's so they're using this oh we're giving the kids more fresh fruits and vegetables yeah but where'd they come from you know, Taiwan, um, Colombia, the Philippines, when were they fresh? You know, and what were they ejected with? And what were they sprayed with? You know, um, this is, and that's what I'm, we're educating these children to realize that um, the way the system is built right now, they don't have your best interests at hand. Um, and it's, 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 it's dire, you know, in a way, but to me, I just keep waking up, and I, I, I just, I, I want it to happen so bad that, um, that I, it's like one of those things can't stop, won't stop. Um, it's, it's all, I was, it's almost like now I was put here to be a, you know, the advocates for this and the and to, 
to get this word out and to let people know that that this is happening all over the world. It's not it's not just happening in the United States. Um, I was in the Middle East, and you know, even though there are deserts and some of the richest places on the planet, there they have type two diabetes that is ridiculous, and people are dying from all of these these curable food related diseases all over the world because of the McDonaldification of the world and. Um, uh, it just it just has to stop. I can't I can't say it enough. So um, I'm going to open this up for some questions, but I just want you guys to um, to realize that we have to fix this and um, it's time to um, it's time to make gardening sexy. It's time to make soil sexy. It's time to make growing your own food sexy. So um, you guys need to just get out there and plant some shit and uh, make the world sexy. Okay? So, thank you. Questions? Uh, yes, Ron. Hi. Hi. Nancy Ola from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Nancy from Charlotte. Uh, thank you for all you're doing. I just wanted to relate... Um, a, a short story right. about growing up in Cleveland, Ohio. And for about a 30-year period, gardening was integrated into the public school system. Right. So all of the public schools in Cleveland had a gardening program attached to it. Yep. How do we get the schools involved with the community gardens again? We, we have to, we have to physically, again, that's one of those things, that's what I'm saying, you know, the whole thing dealing with the unified systems. We have, the thing with making it work in the schools, there has to be a champion in that school. <clears throat> there has to be a champion that somebody that doesn't work, that's not affiliated with the school. Um, and that's the only way. I mean, that's what Alice Waters, you know, try doing with the, edible schoolyard, you know. Um, that's the only way it's going to work. You have to have somebody that lives, breathes, sleep, and loves kids and loves being in the garden. Uh, to have a, it, it can't, they're, because these schools are taxed um, and they're, they're spending money on useless stuff. Um, so that's, the, that's, the, that's what I, from, from all the schools I've been to, that's what I see, is the only way it's like even if it's a corporate sponsored thing, you need to have a champion that that's all they do. And we need to get to schools where it's like these kids are going to take this class. You know, this is one. This is a, a mandatory class, you know, getting back to nature. And that's 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 the way I see it. But can it, it, ha it can happen. It's nothing but it for it to happen. Um, but they're not they don't want it to happen. You know, that's why uh, parents. And um, concerned citizens, we have to make it happen. Just the same thing with um, how I, ch you know, we got the law changed for the parkways. Yeah. Hi, my name hi. is my name is Valerie Moore, and um, hi, Valerie. Um, hi, I think you're amazing. And oh, thank you. I want to thank you very much because I've been doing this, and people are like, "What is she doing out there?" And so now that you do it, you're more recognized. So thank you. Um, I actually put stakes out wherever there can be edible landscaping. I put these stakes everywhere. I number them. People take them down. It's completely anonymous, but they are numbered. And I track them, and then I go back and do it again. Um, <laughs> You're a gangster, Val. Huh? I, I am an, I'm a disruptor. Um, I take pride in that. But I do have a question. I, I've been asked a practical question, is that if I put these stakes in places where cars go by, dogs pee, and et cetera, Am I actually producing good food, even if I use organic methods? So I was wondering if you ever got asked that question. Well, yeah, I mean, you, I mean that's another thing. You know, people have, um, I don't generally, like, I don't generally plant in areas where it has theirs, like dog feces, cat feces is not a good thing. Um, you know, but we have a whole, we buy urine. People, you know, urethra, they, they actually use urine, cow urine, and different things to plant in. But we have this thing about it. Some people 
you know, they collect their urine, you know, because it has a, it has a lot of um, enzymes and proteins in it. Dogs, cats, it's a little, I don't, I don't, I don't go there. I mean, and there's, there's ways to create a barrier if you're planning on the street, you know, from them. And the bottom line, you have to have, um, that has to be, that has, that definitely has to be a concern. Um, and there's, there's, there's ways to get around it with certain plants that they don't want to be around uh, and stuff like that. Cars? How do you deal with cars, though? Well, you don't, you don't see, and, and that to me, plants are not inhaling that stuff from cars. You know, if you look at the equipment that people are farming with, the diesel fuel, the spray, you're eating more garbage than, you, than can possibly come from a car exhaust or a tire. That's not going into the plant. You know, the plant's not, um, not absorbing that, you know. Thank you. You're welcome. How you doing? Hi, um, my name is Catherine English. I'm an architecture student from Hi. University. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested in how do you, what need do you see buildings uh, filling to fix this problem? Say that, 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 what do I see buildings? What need do you see buildings filling um, to help you fix this problem? Um, buildings? Yeah. Well, we have to, we live in buildings. You know, so <laughs> the first thing, unless, unless, until we get something else to live in, <laughs> we have to let it fit the problem. Buildings need to have systems that they have to be, um, I'm not an architect, but I play one on TV. They have to be, they have, you know, they, they have to use sunlight. They have to use, they have to collect water. You know, we're, we're dumping tons and tons and tons of snow and rainwater that, that could, we can store to um, to irrigate, and we don't. We just let it, you know, run off and get polluted somewhere else. Whereas this is fresh water coming out of the sky, clean water that we can use for irrigation. So there needs to be um, catchments for that, and um, there needs to like even if some if you paint your roof white, you know, whereas you're 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 bouncing some of the sun sunlight off. It's it's all it's tons and tons of simple things that can be integrated in the, in the buildings that we're, they're just not doing, you know. And do you see them um, use, working as a social, um, also t to help with this problem socially and um, educationally? Well, they have to, yes. I mean, we're, we're all connected. I mean, it, 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 and that's, I think that's, I don't know what it's going to take for everybody to realize that, that we breathe the same air, you know. We, it's, it's the same soil, you know. Um, we drink literally the same water, unfortunately. Um, but, um, yeah, no, they, 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 have to, they have to be a part of it. You know, we all have to be a part of it. I mean, that's the only way it's going to be changed. I mean, you've got to realize that, I mean, the government has, has allowed a lot of this to happen. You know, they've allowed... Um, you know, these, the water to be bought and sold back to us, you know, um, I mean, and, and the same thing with air, <laughs> you know, um, these are, and, and, and with food, they have us thinking that w the only way we can get food is if they grow it for us. Now I don't need you to grow my food, I grow my own damn food, you know, but they have it, there's so many people on the planet that you can't feed everybody, so we have to, we have to farm like this. We have to deplete the soil. You know, that's what happened in the Dust Bowl. Nobody could eat because they deplete. They planted the same crops over and over and over, and that's what they're doing. They're doing it again right now, you know, with the soy and the wheat, and they just plant it again and plant it again, and they spray it and spray it, spray it. So pretty soon we're not going to have any soil that's good enough that's, that can grow food. So, no, they have to. I mean, we, we have to have... How can it help? We green walls where you can go, you know, outside and pick your salad off the off your wall, off your fence. Yeah, it's it's got to happen. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Good morning. Thank you for the inspiring introduction to you. Thank you. Uh, Brad Nice from Kansas, and I have a question. Uh, working with entities that are concerned that when we do things like this near or around the building, it increases security risks, whether from attraction of more people that they have to manage or places to hide certain things. I need that turned up. I can't really, I can't hear you. Oh, maybe the mic. All right. There so, you go. All right, there we go. 
question about uh, dealing with entities that are concerned about increased risk by having gardens nearby their facilities, whether it from uh, having more people there that they feel they have to manage or uh, hiding things there that would be adverse to the building. Do you have any experience working with that or advice? Um, that I'm not really understanding the question. So working with an entity and we talk about planting an edible landscape. Right. Um, they're concerned about people coming up and wanting to participate in that landscape. They right. don't want to manage the people or hiding something that may be adverse to the building, like a dis destructive weapon or something. Right. Um, any well, advice on how to get them engaged? Well, yeah, just that. I mean, when you once once people, and that's the beauty of this. I mean, just like it attracts. I mean, all look, what the thing with the with the garden. <laughs> it's amazing to me. You know, you don't see dragonflies 20 years. You don't see hummingbirds. You don't see nothing. You put a garden in, it's like, whoosh, it's like they were sitting around. When the hell is he going to put the garden in? You know? And, and all of a sudden, you just see this happen. And you're like, where the hell was all these things before? And it's the same thing of how it changes people. People volunteer and they want to help. Like with my garden, they've, people are like, they, hey man, we were worried because this was overgrown and we were wondering and we were wondering if we should do this. And I want them to know that, no, yes, you can pull some weeds. But I want, it's a circle and a lot of people don't understand. They don't get the other side of the circle. It's give and take. That's the full circle. Uh, you know, you give and you take, you know. Um, so with what you're saying, yeah, we've, they've, they've, they've all, they already have statistics to show Crime rates go down when green spaces go in. You know, peer, they have these statistics. I mean, do and that's do I need do I need another statistic to tell me that? Do I need you? No. Just just let's just make it happen. You know. Did I did that answer your question? It's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it, it, it's a hard sell. <laughs> No, but I mean the bottom line. You put it in, and you're gonna see the. You put the garden in, and you're gonna see respect. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna see. I mean the bottom. What happens with me? Like I'll have sunflowers, and people just like come break them all. You know, just break them, and sometimes they pull them out the ground and just throw them down. What I do? I just put another sunflower in. Yeah. You know, it's like you paint over the wall. I just, I just repaint it. And so, and after a while, they're gonna get tired of it. <laughs> you know, and realize that. Okay, maybe I should go somewhere else to do this. That's what I find that happens. How you doing? Hi, um, my name is Katie Ament. I am How you doing? A, an environmental studies student and the president of the community garden up here at Temple University. Great. Um, I'm just curious if you are familiar with or with permaculture because a lot of the things you were talking about, like thinking about the systems and how they interact, um, it's really related to that design theory. So. Yeah. Well, I, I'm. I'm. I'm extremely familiar with permaculture, you know, um, but um, and I, some of it I like, some of it I don't. I mean, some I don't like the fact that they've branded it permaculture, and this is like you have to do this if you're going to use the word permaculture. I don't like that because all they've done was taken ancient systems that's been in place since the dawn of time, and some white guy came and did a book. You know, like yeah. white guys do. <laughs> and um, and now, you know, it's like, hey, this is mine. You can't use this unless you do that. Is it, does it do, uh, yeah, it works. I mean, the whole, the, the system works. But they're using earth systems to, to build, period. You know, but the Indians did the same thing. Yeah. You know, remember those guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, I, I, I definitely believe in... Um, um, installing um, some um, some theories of permaculture definitely do because they work. Yeah. You know, and with me, I was doing permaculture and didn't even know it was permaculture. I'm like, what the hell right. is that? You know. Okay. Thanks. Yep. How you doing? Good morning, Ron. Grace Good. from Sarasota. Hi, Grace. M more of an observation, maybe, than a question. I, you got me thinking as you were talking that we have the fast food craze, uh, and it's really more one person fighting the industrial food machine. It's the GMO and yep. um, 20 years ago when I was breastfeeding my kids, I was considered a radical mom. Right. So we can make a difference one person at a time improving the health of people yep. and our planet. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
But that breastfeeding thing, that, that made me think of a story where I had a, a friend, a dear friend, that was, she was feeding her um, daughter this infamil formula, the soy formula. So she thought she was doing the, the right thing because she was giving her daughter soy. But she didn't realize that, like, damn it, all soy, soy <laughs> is GMO. And she didn't know that soy had so much estrogen in it. And so as the girl grew up, you know, she was getting hair in places that a child that young really shouldn't have hair, mood swings, and the whole nine. And um, it comes to find out that the doctor, you know, thought that all of this was happening because of, of this soy, you know. So, I mean, even stuff like that, it shouldn't happen. Um, that... We have all these products that are on, on the market that um, have all these poisons in them. Um, and it, it need be, like cancer patients where they tell them, okay, don't use shampoo, don't use lotion, don't use toothpaste, don't use all the stuff that we use every day. While all of a sudden, you know, you're a cancer patient, they're telling you not to use it. That should tell you something, you know. <laughs> How you doing? Just fine. I'm Ruth from Tennessee, and Hi, I just have a practical question. Um, so we're in inner city neighborhoods. How do people get access to the seeds or the plant materials and the tools to do community gardening? You say, how do you get access? How do the folks in inner city get access to those things? You buy them. <laughs> you know how much money is in the inner city? <laughs> well, you know, why, why, why but, do you think the dialysis center is there? But is there a there? plant store down the street? It's oh, no. Well, seeds. no. You, you can, I mean, there's there's... Well, with me, that I get donations. I mean, there's Home Depots, and you have all that. I mean, and, and seeds, it have, I mean, when you think of how nominal, I mean, come on, what a pack of seeds costs and what you get from a pack of seeds, it's, it's not like you have people that, that are just, like, totally destitute and don't have a dime to their neck. No, I mean, it's, it's more economical to grow your own food than it is to buy it. So, um all that, all that, um, I mean, it's tools. You can go to Salvation Army. You can go anywhere. I mean, I, you, you can use your, your hands, <laughs> you know, to dig. So that, that's not really, to me, that's not really an issue. The issue is changing mindsets. That, I think that's the biggest issue is, um, is just um, changing, changing people's perception of where food comes from. That's the biggest thing. I, the last two, they want me to get the hell out of here. Hi, Ron. I'll be quick. My name's Hi. Jody. I'm from Toronto. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Good. Um, very quickly, have you ever been approached by the food banks or anything? To because, do what? Uh, to supply fresh products or to help them grow their own. Uh, not food banks, but kind of close. Yeah. I mean, we have we have them. Um, I mean, I'm not doing that much production, whereas I personally, I mean, my whole no. thing is to get the word out to get people to grow their own food you know, yeah. um, and to take their health back. What about helping them start gardens? The reason I ask, there's actually a program in our city from the Stop Food program where they actually have uh, taken community gardens in, in, the, in the parks and started gardens, and they encourage the people to not only come to get food from their food bank, but to help grow it and to educate them about the nutrition. And you're talking about kale. We, you know, they give away seeds and things like that for people to plant. Um, and it actually is a way, because often, I don't know if anyone else has seen anyone or had to use food banks. Most of it is not fresh. Most of it is not nutritious. Right. You know, it's, it's hard to put together good food to feed your family. Yeah. Um, so it was something that, that uh, I thought I was curious, if you've ever uh, thought of starting programs with them. Oh, no, I mean all that. I got, we, got, we have um, churches, food banks, um, um, schools, I mean, all these need garden. All of these, putting gardens in all these places. I have, I have a library um, that I'm, you know, about to work on in L.A. That's, um, that we thought, hey, why not have lib food at the library? Yeah. You know. Thanks. Take care. Hey, Ron. Um, Ryan Castle from uh, Utah, and I just have to say it's an honor to, to be able to ask you a question. Oh, stop. <laughs> So um, uh, Utah, like many other uh, cultures, I'm sure, has a very long and deep-seated tradition of gardening. And um, there, is, uh, there are some very curious um, laws wherein, in my specific community, 
uh, we pay a nominal fee and we have uh, unlimited access to water. However, it is illegal to collect your own rainwater. Right. And um, you, your example is, uh, you know, to just fight the man and, uh, and you know, just do it anyway. Uh, I'm curious if, if that's your suggestion to go about uh, making change. Oh, totally. For I mean, that's I mean, that's the way I made the change. That's where that's that's me being a criminal is why I'm here up here now. If I wasn't if I wasn't a criminal, if I wasn't an anarchist, if I wasn't um, a gangster, <laughs> if I if I just had accepted that, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you now. But no, we you have to. How are you going to stop me from collecting rain? I mean, think of how, how stupid that is, you know. I mean, really, think about that. It's like, it's, it's in my yard. I didn't ask it to be here. <laughs> Guys, I got to go. But I'm honored that you would have me here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, guys.